Hey everybody, welcome back to another Retro Tech. Today in the Vintage Spotlight, we have the Amprobe AM5 for your vintage pleasure. Amprobe is definitely no stranger to the multimeter realm. They've been around for a long, long time. Much like its fluke brethren beside it, the Amprobe has these very interesting push button style buttons. They utilized this sort of switching mechanism, which actually worked pretty well. Gotta say, this is definitely a very colorful multimeter. Boy, these reds and yellows and greens, they really, really stand out. Um, yeah, this thing is definitely ready for the 4th of July. Now this is circa about 1979, 80, 81-ish. It's really hard to get a de facto um, date stamp on this meter. Not a lot of documentation on the meter in general. So um, suffice to say 79 to 81 is when this meter was manufactured by this really hefty, cool case. I mean, back in the day, they didn't mess around when they said they gave you a multimeter case. Boy, they weren't kidding. Look at the stitching on this, pure leather. Oh, when wow. you open up that case, yeah. look at that. Made in the United States of America. Good old USA technology. Nice oh. felt lining inside. And we have little compartments here for the test probes themselves. Little warning label on the top for factory um, service, yada, yada, yada. But uh, hey, all in all, pretty cool. Really package. unique is the actual test leads themselves. Um, first, of all, first off, let's take a look at the leads. And yeah, these suckers are long. I'm not kidding you, they're probably about four feet long at least. They are some long test leads, but yeah, look at that, we get two black test leads. And these are the original test leads that shipped with this unit. They're both black, but one is red and one has a black wire. So <laughs> you really had to do a double take when you're doing your testing back in the day because uh, yeah. So not the safest way to go about doing things, but don't forget this is before safety or standards were in play. Now something else about these test leads, look at that, not your standard input jacks, are they? No, that's because this multimeter, it's not your standard multimeter, look at that. So basically you pushed and you twir twisted and that was it, you're in. Same thing for, let's try the common here, twist and bada boom bada bing, it is in there permanently. It's not going anywhere. So a definite unique style of input jack. Now, thank God this didn't catch on. No, it's really problematic in the sense that you gotta push and pull, pull and push. But uh, wow. A rating of 1000 volts ACDC, so it was pretty darn uh, high up there in the voltage arena. Also did a milliamps, but only a paltry 20 milliamps. And it also did resistance. I'm back the meter. Ampro model M5, made in Japan by Ampro Instruments. As well, you cool. can see, one nine volt battery is what powered the AM5 whose holder here, and that fuse unfortunately is missing. Okay, so to turn the meter on, as you can see, off and on are the bottom. Turn it, push it in, and there we are. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. We are now powered up and ready for some testing. Now, as I mentioned, those probes, pretty funky, pretty funky looking probes but one is positive, one is negative. All right, let's try a, a couple of basic tests, see how this 40 plus year old meter still is in the accuracy department. Okay, we have it hooked up to the precision voltage standard, and now we have to put it into volts DC, so you can see over here, volts DC, give it a little press, and bada boom, bada bing, we are in volts DC. 5.00 volts is what we wanna see. 4.9 volts coming up. Hey, considering it's 40 plus years old, I'll take it, I'll take it. All right, right now we're on resistance mode. Let's see if we can get 100 ohms out of this meter. Here we go. And not looking good, not looking good. Hang on. Ooh. Sitting at 100 ohm right now, and unfortunately the multimeter is a no-show. Now it's all over the place in terms of resistance, so I am gonna take it apart at some point. I will definitely give it a good cleaning, and hopefully uh, it will come back to life in resistance mode. But anyway, hey, we tried, we tried. Another neat feature on the amp probe is, check this out. You see these little slots here, and what that is for, if you look on the side of the test leads, it's actually a little slot, a little groove, so it can fit like so. Or if you wanna do a one-handed, like so. So here we are on in the neat. inside right now. Wow, look at that. Even back in the late 70s, early 80s, 
they thought of shielding and grounding. Amazing. This gives us a pretty good look at that push button technology that we're using uh, in place of a selector switch. Boy, check out those contacts for the input jacks. Man, oh man, I'm telling you, that is some weird tech, amazing. So what you see here, that test lead just basically makes contact with that uh, input jack. And uh, wow, there you go. So definitely they have come a long way in input jack technology since Ampro came out with this design. Here we have the main brains of the unit. This is an Intersil ICL 7106P CPL. That is a three and a half digit AD converter and display IC. Here's the nine volt connector for the battery. And of course, nice brass threaded inserts to keep that unit in place. Ah, oh, love it. And something else that's really funky is we also have the shielding on the front of the PCB as well. Very cool. And man, oh man, look at that LCD display soldered directly into the PCB. Whoa, they don't do that anymore, do they? And here we have, uh, look at those soldering joints. A lot of flux, a lot of flux, a lot of buildup over time. So that can cause problems. I'm gonna go in there, the Q-tip and some uh, IP and give it a good cleaning. And who knows, who knows, it just may, it just may fix that resistance problem. Didn't want to turn this into a retro restore, but you know what, just to give you guys a quick little peeky boo, here you go. So yeah, take my Q-tip and I'm just gonna gently go over all of that PCB. Get rid of that gunk, look at that. Oh, 40 years of buildup, yee. So I'll give this a really good cleaning. I use some Plastex for the LCD display, not the display, but rather the clear acrylic or plastic screen that's over the inlay. Give that a good buffing on the inside and the outside. Um, gave the contacts themselves a cleaning with that 404B contact. And those switches now, they're like butter, like butter. Check it out. Absolutely gorgeous. Fortunately, in the resistance department, however, it didn't work. Still a no-go, but oh, at least we tried. All in all, the Ampro AM5 is one funky little vintage meter, and I'm glad you took the trip down Retro Tech Lane with me, because this one was a lot of fun.